the seventh in the series of James Bond films, is the 1971 movie Diamonds Are Forever. It's based on Ian Fleming's 1956 novel that bears the same name. The story has Bond impersonating a diamond smuggler to infiltrate the smuggling ring, and he soon uncovers a plot by his old enemy, Ernest Blofeld, to use the diamonds to make a space-based laser weapon. James Bond has to battle him one last time to stop the evil genius with his plan of destroying Washington, D.C. and taking over nuclear supremacy of the world. The filming began April 5th, 1971, with the South African scenes actually filmed in the desert near Las Vegas, and the movie ended up wrapping August 13th, 1971. It was shot primarily in the United States, using locations in Los Angeles, Universal Studios, and eight hotels in Las Vegas. Pinewood Studios in England were also used in the film. The unbelievable sequence of the oil rig was shot off the shore of Oceanside, California. Most of the filming in Vegas took place primarily in hotels that were owned by Howard Hughes because he was a real close friend of the producer. Kirk Douglas' house was used for the scene that's supposed to be Tiffany's house, and the Elrod house in Palm Springs became the Willard White house. The exterior shots of the slumber mortuary, which I find just hilarious that that's the name of the mortuary. That's one thing about the Bond films. They have hilarious names for people and places. But that mortuary is actually the Palm Mortuary in Henderson, Nevada. Because of Sean Connery's high fee for doing this movie, the special effects budget was significantly scaled back. He reportedly got paid $1,250,000 for his return as James Bond. And this was just an unheard of figure for those days. During Bond's briefing with M at the beginning, M refers to Bond having been on holiday and later made it a point to let him know that the service had managed well during his absence. These were inside jokes that referred to Sean Connery's absence from the movie On Her Majesty's Secret Service from 1969. It said that Sean Connery made the most of his time while he was on location in Las Vegas. He said that he didn't get much sleep at all. Most nights were filled with shooting the film, and on off nights, he caught shows and played golf all day. He just basically collapsed on the weekends to recover to do it all again the next week. The Bond escape scene through the moon landing movie set refers to a popular conspiracy theory of that time that the real moon landings were faked. The scene was filmed in a gypsum plant located just outside of Las Vegas. During the filming, the moon buggy's wheels kept falling off, and you can actually see that in one shot that they left in the film. This moon buggy was discovered rotting in a farmer's field in the early 1990s, and then it was completely restored in 1993 by the James Bond fan club. In 2004, it was auctioned at Christie's and purchased by Planet Hollywood in Vegas for $44,000. This is the second of three James Bond title songs that were sung by Shirley Bassey the others being Goldfinger and Moonraker. She also sang a version of the Mr. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang song for Thunderball in 1965, but it wasn't used. Bassie is the only singer to have performed a Bond title song more than once. Now, the character of Willard White was really based on Howard Hughes, and this is completely obvious by all the similarities to the eccentric Hughes' life. White owned the White House in this movie. Howard Hughes owned real-life Las Vegas hotels, specifically the Desert Inn. At the time of this movie, Jimmy Dean, who played White, was an employee of Hughes's at the Desert Inn. And Jimmy Dean felt pretty uneasy about this portrayal 
He felt like he was doing something wrong, this being his real-life boss. When Lana Wood was cast as Plenty O'Toole, she was told early on that the scene where she is thrown out of Bond's hotel room and lands in the pool required the stunt team to throw her in the pool basically naked. But she was assured that no one outside the crew would see her undressed in public because the scene would be shot at night. Unfortunately for her, the scene was shot in Las Vegas, and as she noted, most of the people in Vegas were up at night. So contrary to what the filmmakers had promised her, she had to endure countless people watching her as she emerged from the pool, soaking wet, clad in nothing but flimsy see-through underwear and high heels. Now Tiffany, being the first American Bond girl, is completely argumentative and pretty abrasive and loud when compared to previous Bond girls. This is apparently supposed to be a commentary on American women. Now, there was a lot of crash scenes in the car chase sequences of the movie. And since they knew it was going to happen quite often, the filmmakers had an arrangement with Ford to use their vehicles. Ford's only demand in using all their cars was that Sean Connery had to drive a 1971 Mustang Mach 1 that served as Tiffany Case's car. Now, Tiffany Case was blonde in the novel, and in the movie, she's a redhead. This is addressed when Bond first meets her, and he states that, weren't you a blonde when I came in? After the disappointing box office performance, of On Her Majesty's Secret Service in the U.S., although it was actually a pretty big hit in other parts of the world. The producers of this movie went all out to try to win the American audiences back. And this partially explains why the bulk of the film is set in the U.S. Now, it's pretty strange that the name Las Vegas is never actually spoken in the movie. Actresses that were considered for the role of Tiffany Case included Raquel Welch, Jane Fonda, and Faye Dunaway. Jill St. John had originally been offered the part of Plenty O'Toole, but landed the lead after impressing the director, Guy Hamilton, during a screen test. Due to the height difference, Lana Wood had to stand on a box for most of her scenes with Sean Connery. This proved to be problematic for the scene where Connery had to strip Lana out of her dress and down to her underwear because a body double wouldn't have worked for obvious reasons. Ultimately, Lana was given extra high heels to wear in that scene. Now, Jill St. John and Lana Wood have been involved in a decades-long feud that began during the filming of this movie throughout the spring of 1971 when both women were dating Sean Connery at the same time. But it gets even more complicated than that. In February of 1982, less than three months after the mysterious drowning of Lana's sister, Natalie Wood, Jill St. John started romancing with Robert Wagner, and this was Lana's brother-in-law, and she went on to eventually marry him at a Bond girl photo shoot reunion in September of 1999 that was done for Vanity Fair magazine. An altercation occurred between St. John and Wood when the photographer asked for a picture of them together. It's been reported that St. John was so adamantly opposed to the idea that it reduced Lana Wood to tears. In February of 2016, Wood crashed a benefit honoring St. John in Palm Springs and publicly ended up confronting Wagner in front of a cameraman over Natalie's death. Following that confrontation, Wood has claimed that she has received threatening phone calls from an anonymous woman who told her to lay off of Wagner or something serious would happen to her. She ended up reporting the threats to authorities, and initially she thought that it might be Jill St. John trying to scare her off and protect Wagner. But the problem was she didn't recognize Jill's voice at all and said it wasn't her. In July of 2018, Lana Wood appeared on television, and when she was asked if she thought that Wagner murdered her sister, her answer was yes. 
This is one of those things we'll probably never know the answer to. But I find the interesting thing about all of this is that it all started while this movie was being filmed in Las Vegas. And I don't know what Sean Connery was thinking about when he was doing this and dating both these women that were in the same film that he was. This is just asking for trouble. Take a look back at this fabulous movie from 1971. It's always a blast to watch James Bond in his role as 007. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.